we'll see if we can get some bass today. I'm sure we'll probably get some pike as well. Stay tuned. Like I said, I'm sure we'll get some pike as well. All right, dude, settle down. He's got all the fight left in him because he was right at the shoreline. Oh, yeah. You're watching me. Every time I go to grab, you're going to move. There we go. Barely hooked. Look at that, guys. Barely hooked. But you know what? That's no skunk. I'll take it. That's number one. Whenever you get a pike on the line, want to check your line for nicks. All right, guys, this is going to be my quick review of the Rapala BX Brat. Uh, I got a number three and a number six here. That's three. Uh, foot depth and six foot depth. Um, I just tied on the six foot depth. Um, I already caught a northern with the three and some shallow areas around some rock and some weeds. So this is going to be my quick review. Got the six on right now. It's a pearl gray shiner. Um, it's a little overcast day. I uh, kind of wish I would have got the gold and a six as well um, just for this purpose of this video. So, But I'm going to cast it out. They cast really nice. I'm casting into the wind right now with a bait caster. I'm using a Bass Pro Shops cranking stick, um, medium heavy, seven foot. And, and look at that. Look at that. So far, guys, I think I'm really liking it. <laughs> Look at that, guys. And not a super big hog, but uh, it's pretty big. This is probably pretty close to three pound bass right here. First cast with this thing. On my review, I love it. So uh, let me unhook this guy. I want to see what it weighs. And we'll get back to the review. All right, just to quickly show you right next to the fish. Okay, right there. That's the bait, guys. First cast with this one. That's awesome. I was casting that gold one here a little bit, but it didn't get deep enough. So let's see what this guy is. You guys know me. I like my gambler scale. Um, this thing's been the most accurate scale I own. I check it all the time. 2.10 guys it's a pretty nice fish all right so right there first bass on the rapala brat there and that's a six foot diver xd brat i think it was called um let's just double check here i'll be telling you guys the wrong thing yeah bx brat six bx brat six so um, I'm going to continue my review on that, see if we can't get a few more. Pretty nice bass right there. Pretty happy with that. Um, this will be a vlog slash review, guys, just so you know. Again, like I said, they cast super nice, and I am casting into the wind. It's probably about a 10-mile-an-hour uh, 10 wind, roughly. Um, Kind of like the six foot diver this is a smaller version of the lure i'm gonna like the six foot diver a little better than the three at least here um, don't get me wrong the three will be very useful as well but um at least with the six foot i'm able to bounce it off the rocks and 
off the rocky bottom here is what it is pretty early it's got a nice nice fat wobble to it which has really been provoking strikes lately as well as obviously bouncing it off the bottom so far so good you can feel the vibration i like being able to feel a little bit of vibration it doesn't have to be crazy oh, got a top water here turn it into a top water guys um, the vibration doesn't have to be crazy but i just like to be able to feel and know that my allure is working especially when you got something specifically because you want the big vibration or the big wobble um, it's nice to know that it's working you can definitely feel it there you go some more weeds all right so let's take a quick look at this um love the color in this love the fact that they actually have it printed on there bx brat um, six foot more lure companies need to start doing that printing on the lure at least or maybe stamping the bill what the depth is um, i know rapala is notorious for doing that um, but more companies need to do that the eye itself really reflective really like that um, the hooks on here even though these hooks are fairly small like i said i got the smaller version the hooks on here are pretty stout another quick comment is i've been beating up this rock and gravel down in here pretty good and one of the things that i look for in a square bill is a strong bill man i can't have this thing cracking in in a day or two you know or whatever i need this to last a good majority of a season i mean i'm gonna have a handful of them you know square bills obviously different colors different shapes sizes whatever but i need that that bill to be tough that's one other thing that i'm looking for and so far this bill it feels pretty tough man i mean it's it's deflecting very very well that's the lure right there man it's a pretty cool looking lure guys both of them um again let me show you the other one you know the other one is the haymaker haymaker color it's kind of a gold on top a little bit of orange on the bottom um, and then I got the silver, both for different conditions. I mean, normally the silver would work better in uh, high sun conditions and the gold would work better in the um, overcast conditions. But as you can see, I caught a nice bass with the silver. So, or sorry, not the silver, but it's the pearl gray shiner, basically a silver color. So that's the lures right there. All right, that's going to conclude the review of them and we're just going to get to fishing. So here we go. another one last minute hit settle down don't want to feel those stout hooks last minute hit it's a little guy little tiny guy right there but you know what it's a little bass and it's still fun on and it's pike
kind of figured that if I got something over here, it'd be a pike. Oh, hopefully I don't lose it, man. That's deep. Boat flip. Yep, don't want to lose a $7 lure to a dink pike. Oh, man, I might have to perform surgery on this guy. He's bleeding pretty bad, so we'll see you guys in a minute. All right, guys, that wasn't too bad. Um, one thing that you should always carry on you, um, whenever you have the possibility, <clears throat> excuse me, of getting northern pike, um, yeah, I'm definitely going to have to retie. One thing that you should always carry on you guys, let me show you this, is a jaw spreader. This right here. You open that up like that, and that opens their jaws. That right there is a jaw spreader. Um, always carry one of these on you if you're fishing any place that has pike or muskie. Um, it even helps with walleye and stuff like that as well for you know deep hooks. But a lot of times guys are keeping walleye, so might not be as big of a deal if you have a deep hook. So I'll keep that in mind. I am gonna have to retie guys. All right, so. I know you guys have already seen this through demonstrations before, but here it is, man. Line cutter's ring. It's a beautiful thing. Tying the trilene knot. it's nice and tight pinch that knot down with your finger there bring the tag end up make sure that that's tight as well and you take your lure in your hand like this and you get your desired amount and cut it off being that this is fluorocarbon I can leave a little longer of a tag which I like to do just in case it slips although this knot is a really good knot and it doesn't usually slip so all right guys I think we got the bait down packed we've been catching fish is color going to be the key um this is the i believe it's the new bass pro shops uh bluegill color on their square bill this is a 3 8 ounce square bill so let's see is color going to be key we were using gold silver caught a 2.10 on basically a silver color let's see if this kind of coppery color with that little bit of a blue and and the the pattern is going to work a little better on this because I don't know what happened. My line spun out. And it just snapped off. So my lure is sitting out there. I can see it. But I'm a little upset. That's what happens with fluorocarbon, guys. Um, sometimes you get a little kink in it or whatever. It's an awesome line to fish. But uh, sometimes you get a kink in it, and that's it, man. <laughs> All right, guys, so looks like I got my line, which hopefully means I'll get my lure back. Um, this is a lot of line right here. There's two things that I'm happy about here. One, getting my lure back. Got it right here. That's awesome. Okay, that's the first thing. Two, the second thing that I'm extremely excited about is I am excited that this line is not going to be in the water. This is a lot of line, guys. Look at that. I must have had a deep kink inside that fluorocarbon. So you guys gotta make sure that you manage your fluorocarbon well, um, otherwise this can happen. Um, when I caught that pike, 
I accidentally pressed the thumb bar and my line spun out. Kind of sucked. I, I don't ever do that. I don't know why I did that or whatever. But when it spun out, I had a fish on, so I had to keep reeling. So as I was reeling it in, I'm sure that it bent over and kinked up inside there. And that's why this, this happened. Uh, fluorocarbon is a tough line, but it also can be you know brittle when you kink it up and stuff like that so keep that in mind guys and always throw your line in the garbage and your styrofoam containers from bait or anything else make sure you pick up after yourselves out on these lakes and ponds and stuff like that otherwise places like this eventually people are going to kick you out so keep that in mind guys all right so i'm going to get back to fishing here Got another fish here, guys. It looks like it's a halfway decent bass. Oh, this is gonna suck. I don't wanna, wanna flip it, but I'm gonna have to. Yeah, look at that. Settle down, settle down. Ah, he just swiped at it. This is a two pounder. Just turn the camera off to save on a little little life I only got about a quarter of the battery left so this is kind of what you're gonna get if we get a few more I want to stick around out here for another hour or two um, may, maybe another hour at least but this is a solid two pound bass I'm gonna go ahead and ah, you know what I'm saying that it's just under two pounds so I'm gonna go and weigh it just because I like to know One point twelve, pretty much just like I said, just under two pounds. Um, got him hiding in some weeds. I'm using that square bill again. This time, instead of the Rapala, I got the XPS one on. All right, guys. So we got a handful of bass, um, handful of pike. Uh, had some mishaps. Caught some fish. Um, got out here and done this made a little vlog and a review and um, hope you guys like the review so uh, I Really thank you guys for subscribing to my channel um, Tell me what square bills you guys like to use in the comments below Just let me know what square bills you guys like to use and what colors work best for you guys So don't forget to check out the links at the end of my videos. Thanks for watching and as always fish on